Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and the shop. Frank here. I thought I would uh, make a short video here, cover a couple topics that are, I think would be of interest to the subscribers and viewers. Uh, I thought I would recap the uh, dozer build, which is taking place over the past seven or eight months. Uh, <clears throat> and then talk a little bit about the channel and you know what's what's up next. Uh, hopefully give you some insights into where we're going and uh, we'll see where where that takes us. All right, I think first of all I want to say thanks to all the subscribers on the channel. I mean we've hit 20,000 subscribers. I had no no expectation that there would be so many people interested in a retired old engineer playing around in his workshop. Uh, we'll get talk a little bit more about about that in a, in a minute. Uh, I did want to talk about the dozer and uh, you know how that has turned out. So. I think generally it's met my expectations. I started this as just building something that you know you could take I could take to a tractor show or play around with in the on the property. And I mean I think I've accomplished accomplished that. As I stated in the very beginning, it was never intended to be a commercial duty piece of equipment. It's just and I've said this many times, it's just a toy. I, I, I mean, toy maybe understates it a little bit because it, it is functional to the extent that it's functional. I mean, it's limited in its horsepower, it's limited in its traction due to its weight, but you know, I think it's fully you know, capable within the parameters of its, um, its build. So. Looking back over back to last August, last summer, when I started this build, I have to say I was a little bit uh, uncertain, uh, maybe a little, maybe more than a little bit, but I had some concerns, some some reservations about my uh, transmission and hydrostat modifications. And if you go back to the first um, I don't know, videos three, four, and five, I think, where I'm modifying the hydrostatic transmissions and the rear axles. Uh, I wasn't sure. I, I had a high degree of confidence that it would work because it all seemed, all made sense to me, but I was by no means assured, you know, that it would work because I don't think anybody's ever, ever done that. Uh, at least I've never seen it. If you have, you know, I'd be interested in in checking that out, but uh, all the other Dozer uh, Cub Cadet tracked vehicle conversions, to my knowledge, have been done with an open differential and braking, differential braking, right or left braking, in order to make the vehicle turn. And I mean, that's, I mean, in fact, that's how, you know, older dozers back in the 50s and 60s, I guess, you know, and before that, up until recently, or maybe in the past 20 years, you know, that's how dozers were built, that they're, the, you use brakes to turn. And, you know, that has some advantages in terms of simplicity, and I believe that's how all the other Cub cadet tract conversions have been done. And I mean, there's only been two or three that I've seen. I'm sure there have been more, uh, but that's, I believe, how they're all done. I wanted a different outcome. I wanted a different capability. I wanted to operate the two tracks independently of each other, as you would see today in the skid steers and the newer 
tra tracked vehicles where you have, a you have a hydraulic drive, a final drive for each track, and they can be operated independently. So you basically can run one track forward and one track in reverse at the same time to spin in place, and basically. So that was my objective. One, to be a little bit different from what's been done before, and two, to you know, provide that, that capability. With that, that capability in mind, having a, using Cub Cadet differentials, rear ends, I necessarily had to have one drive at the front and one drive at the rear on opposite sides, so diagonally opposite corners, which meant that I couldn't tension the track with just two wheels, a drive sprocket and a wheel, an idler. I had to go to, I had to tension a different way, which drove me to the high wheel design. And I thought, well, that's cool, because then I could make it, you know, look like a, some of the newer tracked vehicles which have that design. And of course, on those vehicles, their final drive is the, the high wheel, and the, they tension it, you know, the traditional way of extending the, the track frame apart. So I went to, because I had solid axles front and rear, and there, it, the drive line precluded tensioning those by pushing them apart, I went to this high wheel design which becomes the tensioner. And I think it's worked out pretty well. I, I don't, don't have any issues with it. The track seemed to operate fine. Uh, I wanted also, some people had suggested rubber tracks. I wanted the traditional metal tracks. Um, so that's, you know, that's the way I went. Since I had the plasma table, uh, which I purchased specifically for this project, but uh, recognizing that I would need to cut a lot of, a lot of sheet steel, uh, I had the plasma table that could easily cut out all the pieces I need mass produce them and, and put them together. So uh, I think that's, that's turned out pretty well. Uh, but like any, any project, you know, at least for me, I'm never really fully satisfied. There are things I'd like to do to this, this tractor. And at this point, I mean, in the last video, we took it out and used it again after we made some, some modifications since the video, like five or six videos ago. Uh, and I have to say, I'm, for the time being, I'm gonna say the tractor is complete. It will never really be complete, but for phase one, this initial build, I'm gonna say it's complete. There's other things I'd like to do to it. I, it a lot of people suggested a ripper. A ripper is intriguing, and would look cool, but I don't think it has the traction and horsepower to really do much with a ripper. I mean, maybe a scarifier or something like that. So, you know, that's, that's a possibility in the future, but that would require a rear lift and, uh, you know, some, I need to figure out how, how to do that. So that would be, that would be something I, I could do. I mean, adding a rear lift with a hydraulic cylinder, just add another, valve and, and I could do that. But uh, I would also like to do something with the dash to finish the dash off to get a little more finished look. It still has a steering wheel hole and stuff in it and a lot of good suggestions about a tack or an hour meter or something like that. And those are, you know, probably the way I, w I would go. Uh, but I would need to, you know, source those instruments and you know, and, and put them on. So that's that's something that I, I could easily do, I think. Uh, you know, the controls, I think I can change the controls a little bit. The, the track levers, you know, are a little close to the operator seating position, so I, I would like to push them forward. And I can do that with just bending the handles forward. Quite a few people have suggested uh, foot operated controls for the tracks. And that is a little problematic because the controls are so sensitive, I would have to find some way to desensitize them. And there may be a way to do that, but 
uh, the foot controls are because the, the controls, track controls are pretty sensitive, I don't think you would have proper adequate feel in your feet in order to manage the tracks properly. I think it would give very jerky operation. So uh, I put a foot control on the motor grader, but it only had forward and reverse. It didn't have tracks. So it didn't have two controls, it only had one forward and reverse. And uh, it's a little flaky. I mean, it works okay, but it's not as much control as you would really want to have. So foot control is, while it might be neat to do, would be quite a challenge. Not to say that couldn't or can't or won't do it, but it's not a high priority. If it were a commercial machine, it was used a lot, or even something I had planned to use a lot, you know, I would think I, I, I would pursue that a little more vigorously since it's just a, a toy, you know, it, the, the foot controls, you know, really are not that, not that important in this, in the scheme of things. You know, a backup alarm is another thing that has been suggested and uh, that would be cool too, just for the uh, sound. <laughs> not that anybody's going to be behind me, but that would be cool. Uh, it requires some micro switches and stuff, but potentially, potentially doable. Another suggestion that I haven't done, though it makes total sense, is thermostatic controls on the cooling fans, transmission cooling fans. I hadn't even thought about that, so you know the suggestions to to do that are really spot on. So I appreciate that, and. The comments, you know, across the board on the channel have been, you know, really <laughs> kind of astounded me that there's so many people interested in, in this, but uh, everybody, I mean, almost everybody has been really complimentary and supportive and probably complimentary beyond justification. Uh, and, you know, just been a couple people who haven't been happy with the build, and uh, I try to bite my, t I catch myself biting my tongue in my responses. I do read all the comments and I respond to many of them, especially the ones that ask questions uh, or ask for help on their Cub Cadets. I you know, definitely want to help there. I have been collecting Cub Cadets for uh, 12 years or so and got into these Cub Cadet conversions four or five years ago with the first the tandem dump, the six by four uh, dump tractor, like a gator basically, and then the motor grader a couple of years ago. Uh, and I have to credit the motor grader with kicking off this whole YouTube thing. Uh, I posted the motor grader on, I set up a YouTube channel and the name Wooden Metal Shop Time comes from my high school experience in Wooden Metal Shop, which was introduced me to metalworking and got me access to some decent power tools for woodworking. I've been building stuff out of wood since I was, I don't know, probably 10, 10 years old. And my father was somewhat of a do-it-yourselfer and self-made craftsman. And I followed him in his workshop and used his tools. And as it turns out, I didn't realize at the time, but my grandfather's tools, which I still have some of. So I was lucky to, to get those. But in any case, the wood metal shop class in high school really made a big impression on me. And so I, that's how I came up with the name for the, for the channel. Uh, but I posted, uh, so, I, so I set up the channel just to share videos, you know, with my friends is what I did. And I posted the motor grader video there and sent links to a couple of my friends and kind of forgot about it. Um, two or three months later, I get this email from Google saying, you've got all these view, enough views and subscribers to monetize. And I just like, I went out there and looked and there was a million views. I mean, I was astounded. I had no idea. 
so I did that, I did monetize, and I thought, well, people are that interested in uh, homemade equipment, I'm gonna make, I'm, you know, that's what I do, uh, I might as well video the next one. And a lot of people asked for the video, show us the build, show us the build video. So I wound up putting some slide, narrated slideshows together because I didn't video the, the build on the motor grader. There's short clips of video of it operating, obviously, but not the build. I'd taken a lot of photographs. So I put some build videos together the best I could, and they seemed to be pretty popular. So I decided, well, I'm going to go ahead and video Chronicle my next project, which at the time I was thinking about, you know, a tracked vehicle, a, doze, a, a tracked dozer. And the Cub Cadet track conversions I've seen, uh, most of them don't have, you know, a blade or anything on them. They're just a little track, become a tracked tractor. So uh, I think there was one I saw that had a, had a blade on it. Anyway, uh, so with that channel set up, I started videoing some of the stuff I was doing around the shop. So that was a year ago now. And some of them, looking back at them now, uh, I'm a little bit, a little bit embarrassed about the videos, the, the editing and stuff was pretty crude. I had never edited videos before, edited videos before, so that was a whole new skill I had to learn. Got bought some video editing software, and so I spent last summer, spring and summer recording stuff around the shop, little projects, and trying to, you know, get to the point where I felt like I could uh, chronicle the dozer build. So that's where the channel start, how the channel started, and, uh, and, that's, and this is where we are now. Uh, I haven't done any, purposely, haven't done any kind of uh, channel support. I, I appreciate everybody watching the videos and that's that's all I expect. I don't want to create any, since this is just another hobby, uh, I have other hobbies as well. Uh, I don't want, and sometimes my hobbies come and go and I'll start on a, you know, get into something pretty hot and heavy and then something else will come along that'll spark my interest and I'll, you know, that 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 particular hobby will fade away and that's happened and so I don't know you know if this YouTube thing is going to stay as a hobby I didn't want to create any expectations on anybody's part that I would be here at any point in time so that's why I'm not doing any any channel channel support or asking for anything because I don't don't expect it and you know, I appreciate everybody just watching, and that's that's great. Uh, the little bit of revenue that comes from that helps helps me buy more tools, and that's really really all I expect. Uh, okay, so next project, and I don't want this video to run too long. Uh, I I got a lot of questions about the next project, and I don't know right now what it will be. I do know that it won't, I won't start working on it in earnest until the fall, which is, I mean, this is June, so it'll be, you know, September, October before, I think, before I get into it. And it all, what I wind up working on, and I've got a couple ideas, what I wind up work will depend on what I can find in the way of uh, used tractors as donors. So, uh, one of the things I'm thinking about is another tracked vehicle using, uh, rather than having two solid axles, one front, one rear, split the rear axle, basically take two transmissions and put them in side by side. And that'll give a little bit wider width here I had to put spacers on my hubs to get adequate width, but two transmissions side by side, both drives at the rear, for example, and then I can tension the track frame 
as you would in a conventional bulldozer that didn't have the high wheel design. Well, I think even the high wheel is tensioned in the track frame. Uh, and that would still give me independent track control. Uh, and, you know, rather than a high wheel design, it would just be a straight track implementation. And what I would build out of that, what I would put on that tracked vehicle, I don't know. Uh, I don't need, I have a Kubota buck, uh, front end loader, backhoe, uh, you know, and it implements for that tractor. It's got a three point hitch. So I do have that capability. So I'm not sure what I would put on that tracked vehicle. The challenge there would be marrying the two transmissions, which would be a cool thing to do. And um, so I'm thinking about, think about that. The other thing that I'm mulling around is a articulated tractor, four wheel drive articulated tractor. And that's one of the more common Cub Cadet conversions that you see. And if you go out into YouTube and Google articulated Cub Cadet, you'll see a number of them. And you see them at tractor shows. They use two solid axles, push the motor out front, um, articulate the tractor in the middle and uh, drive the rear axle through a CV or a couple universal joints or uh, to give you the four wheel drive. And that's cool because I don't have something like that. If I put a dump bed on the back of it, I would actually have kind of a dump truck, which would be cool. So my Gator really has too small a bed. I could put a bigger bed on it, but uh, it's really more for running around the property and planting plants and stuff, which is what we basically use it for. But it's become a potting bench of sorts on the back of it. Uh, anyway, so uh, the, the sad news is I haven't decided, so I can't tell you what's next. The good news is that I'm open to suggestions. You know, there's been a lot of suggestions, so bring them on. Let me see, let me see what you what you're interested in, and uh, we'll see what materializes. I've got some cool projects coming up around the shop between now and and the next big project. Uh, I'm getting ready to do some preventive maintenance on my um, my boat engines. And so I'm going to video that stuff. That should be interesting. I've got uh, 8.3 liter Cummins turbocharged engines in my boat, 450 horsepower each. Routine maintenance, some annual and some which is done every three or four or five years. So I'm hoping you'll be interested in those. And they're going to be, there's other projects around the shop. I've working on the dozer. I've kind of, while I had some videos early on and you early on in the build I was doing you know a number of tool kind of shop improvement videos while I was building the dozer but my focus shifted to almost entirely exclusively to the dozer so you didn't see a lot of other other videos on the channel and the other videos didn't really get many views anyway but it's what's happening here so I just recorded it I've gotten into the habit of, of recording, uh, you know, whatever, whatever I'm working on out here. So, or most of what I'm working on out here. Anyway, that's what's coming. Shop improvements and tools and stuff this summer. And then maybe if I can find, when I go to find a tractor, I'll bring the camera along and we'll video the purchase process if I can and um, bringing, this, bringing the donors home and tearing into them and see what, see what materializes out of that. So again, I wanna just say thanks to everybody for watching all the videos. It, it's, uh, it's a little surprising, uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. I have enjoyed working on this tractor. And all you guys, and there are not many of them, a couple of guys who said, it'll never work, it's too small, it doesn't have enough horsepower. Uh, I hope I've proved you wrong. Um, one guy said, push over a tree. 
and um, it's not going to push over a tree. Maybe a sapling, but it's not going to push over a tree. It doesn't have the traction. It doesn't have the weight. Uh, I don't think it'll run out of horsepower. It'll spin the tracks. So the people that are concerned that had not enough horsepower, I think were proved wrong because you can see it stopping in some of the videos. You can see it's stopping and spinning the tracks. So there's horsepower, just not enough traction. Even with the grousers, cleats on the, on the tracks, they run out of run out of traction. Um, some of it may be due to the sandy soil here, but it's, it's, it's limited in what it can do. But I think it's, it does what I had, had hoped it would do. So, all right. I haven't done a video in a couple of weeks. Uh, you haven't seen a lapse in the videos because I had a couple of, a couple of videos queued up, but expecting that I would be busy uh, in, you know, end of April, 1st of May, uh, planting gardens and stuff. And, you know, we have quite a few gar um, gardens here. And so the past couple of weeks has been bit very busy with outside yard work, chores, that sort of thing. So give me boo boo. Aw, look who's here. Look who's here. My big baby Brutus. Yeah, what a good boy. Uh-oh. And of course, Butchie has to get in on the act too. These guys, I didn't, I never realized, certainly unexpected, that um, these guys would become semi-stars of the channel. They're a couple of sweet dogs, and you, you dog owners know, so I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but they're a couple of great dogs and um, it's pretty nice having them, having them around. All right, I'm gonna wrap this up. We'll see you guys in the next video when I decide or when I figure out what, what the next project is, I'll share it with you and we'll, we'll go from there. All right, thanks for watching. Where's my brew-brew? Where'd my brew-brew go? Where'd my brew-brew go? There's my brew-brew. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.